think that because you're assigned to a record label, you're going to be a successful musician. Because you're assigned to a traditional publishing house, you think you're going to be a successful author. It doesn't work for some people. Same with staying independent. It works for some people. It doesn't work for some people. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Norman Baliwe and this channel is for creatives and content creators who want to make a career from their passions. So nowadays, we see a lot of independent creators who blow up and they are able to make a consistent livable income from doing what they love. So when I say blow up, I don't mean that, okay, they have half a million followers or one of their posts went viral. I just mean that they have been able to build a solid fan base from their followers and they are able to make a career out of it. So this led me to the question that is it possible to be independent and build a sustainable career without the help of the gatekeepers? And by gatekeepers, I mean those powerhouse companies like record labels, publishing houses, film studios, museums, art galleries, all those kinds of companies. And they are literally gatekeepers because they are standing by the gates and they are scrutinizing your work and scrutinizing you as an artist. And they are like, okay, are you fit to enter into this industry or not? If you are fit, they will sign you into their company because there are different companies under the industry and they will promote your work. But if you are not fit, they will tell you to go. They don't need you. They don't want you in the past when there was no internet these companies were actually very useful because how else will you promote yourself across the world how will somebody hear your song so if you are in nigeria and somebody else is in ghana somebody else in south africa and they're listening to your songs as an artist you needed their help but now with the internet you can just post something and go to be able to spread across the world and our need for them has reduced if you are wondering if I'm thinking that the gatekeepers are useless, I'm not saying that they are useless. I'm just saying that if you are confused about it, you have a choice. You have a choice to either say yes to the gatekeepers or go on your own and be independent. Because there are some people that the gatekeepers have said no to. People that have submitted their songs to record labels. People that have submitted their works to these gatekeepers. But the gatekeepers have refused them and they are like, okay, what else should I do now? These people who are supposed to bring me into the industry and promote me have rejected me so how am i going to go about this so i'm just saying like you have a choice you can decide to do all these things by your own it has its pros and it has its cons but you can't do it it is possible because people all over the world have done it that's why you see people sometimes you just hear songs on tiktok these are made by people in their bedrooms and they do not have the help of record labels to promote their songs. They're already making livable income from their streams because TikTok and the internet has helped them out. Millions of people are already doing it. They are staying independent and they are promoting their work themselves. And they're making all the income by themselves from writers to singers to painters to filmmakers. People are doing it all over the world. So you have a choice. So that's why I made this video. You don't need the gatekeepers to survive. Even though the gatekeepers help you and they promote your work and all you just need to do is just make your art and you promote it and you'll share it across the world and they'll do all the heavy lifting. It has its own disadvantages. For example, the money that you earn through royalties is like 30% or less because the gatekeepers have done majority of the work and they need to pay their staff and they need to pay people that helped you build your work and promote it and everything. So your royalty rate is going to be very small compared to if you did it by yourself. So now I'll give you the pros and the cons of staying independent versus going to these traditional companies. The benefits of the gatekeepers. What would they actually do for your work that you'll not be able to do for yourself? Number one, they have money because it takes money to distribute your work, to market yourself. It takes money to create the thing that you are doing. So they have better finances and they'll be able to create in bulk because they have the money. So that's the first benefit. They have the money and you do not have the money to do that kind of work. The second is they have connections in the industry. So I think that's self-explanatory. You just, they have people that be able to promote. If they need help from somebody, they have people in the highest places in the industry. They have people that know them and are ready to help them to get your work out there. The third benefit is that they have a wider distribution. So for example, if you are, you are trying to get your song on the radio, it's going to be very difficult for you as a person. Like you don't know the first thing about getting your song on the radio, you don't know anybody there. You don't know the requirements, you don't know anything about it. So if you are saying you want to get your song on the radio, it's going to be next to impossible versus a record label who has actual connections. So it's tied in connections and wider distributions. Another example is in the publishing company. Till date, there are some bookstores that will not accept novels and books from self-published authors. They rather accept books from traditional publishers because they have a wider distribution and they have the manpower 
to be able to move books that, that ordinary authors cannot do. Then the fourth benefit is that you have the existing trust of the people. When you hear that Mavens Records has signed a new artist, you are more likely to listen to that person than to listen to somebody that you have never heard of before, that you just met through an ad or through something like that. So they have the existing trust of the people and because of that, when new product comes out, they'll be able to promote and market the products to the people that have already bought things from them. So the cons of these gatekeepers. Number one, you don't own the work. So it's true that your name is on it. You are the singer of the song, you are the writer of the book, but you actually do not own it. Most times when a book is sold to a book publisher, the publisher owns the copyrights. That means if somebody wants to buy the book and turn it into a movie or make a foreign language out of the book, they will not be able to approach the writer. It's not the writer that I going to meet, it's the publisher that I going to meet because the publisher has the copyright. So it's the same thing in the music industry. The person that owns the music master is the master. The person owns the song. So your favorite artists are not the owners of their own song. It's their record label that owns their songs. So once you sign yourself to these gatekeepers, to so these powerhouse companies, you don't own the majority of your work. Obviously, there are some instances where you sign a contract and your publisher agrees that, okay, you have the right, or your record label says, okay, you have the masters, or after 10 years, you are the owner of this copyright, all those kind of things. But majority of the time, you are not the owner of your work. The second coin is that they can drop you. So these companies are businesses and they are in it to make profits. So if they promote your work and you distribute it, but they don't make enough sales, then they can decide that, okay, next time, they're not going to sponsor you, that they're going to cancel the contract, or the next work that you do, they're not the ones that are going to represent you. So they can easily drop you, and you are left stranded, and you have to find another powerhouse company to back you up. The third con is that they give you little royalties. So this one is an understandable fact, because there are many people involved in bringing out your work into the world. So for example, in the music industry, there's the music producer, there's the songwriter, there's the beat maker, there's the people in marketing. So you have to pay all these people first before they pay the artist. And the artist ends up with like 30% royalties or even less. You earn very little royalties when you sign yourself to these traditional houses. The last con is that this traditional model, they promote things that are very generic. So you remember that 20... 12 to 2017 time where a lot of the novels a lot of the movies that were coming out were the same thing you had divergent you had hunger games you had darkest mind because it was trendy many of these publishing houses will want to catch up to the trends so they can be able to make money from it and make a profit basically so most of the time they follow trends that's why many of the music you hear sound alike and you wonder okay why aren't people making different music but many of this different music, in quotes, are not going to be accepted by the powerhouse companies, by these traditional houses. So that's why a lot of the times publishing houses promote trendy, generic things that are not very original because it's trendy and people like it and they are ready to repeat the same things because it's the formula that works. So now we're going to discuss the pros and cons of staying independent and doing all the work by yourself and promoting your work by yourself. The first pro is you have creative freedom. That means anything that you want to do or add in your work, it's possible for you to add it. There's nobody to tell you that, okay, this is how your album cover is going to look like. In that, your movie, remove that scene because some people might vex at it because it's very controversial and we don't want controversial things in this movie. You have total creative freedom from the idea to the date of the release. So everything is on you. Whatever you want to do, you can do it. You don't need that, okay, somebody else is going to tell you that this is what you're going to do. You're the one that's going to control everything. Then the second pro is you own your work. So it's that simple. Once you own your work, you own all the rights that are attached to it. But there are also cons to staying independent and working for yourself. And these cons are deal breakers to most people because most people will not be able to do this because it's very hard. Number one, you fund everything. So you're making a movie, you're going to pay for the set, for the actors, for the movie editors, you're going to pay for all that from your own pocket. So it's going to be expensive and the average person cannot afford that. The second con is you wear many hats. So you have to be knowledgeable about everything. You have to be knowledgeable about accounting and marketing and production and every other thing that is involved with getting your work from idea to production and actual distribution. You're going to be involved in sales in customer support, in all those kind of things. You wear many hats and it's stressful. And most people will not be able to manage that because of the load that is going to be on your head. But if you were working with the gatekeepers, if you were following the traditional route, your job is just to put out the work. 
if you are the writer just write the book and the publishing house will take care of the rest if you are a singer just sing the song and the record label will do the rest of the work for you so the third con is that it is very stressful it's going to be easy to burn out when you are doing all these things so you can imagine why most people are afraid of going independent of staying independent and doing things by themselves so you have seen the pros and the cons of both following the traditional model or staying independent so which one do you prefer let me know in the comments if you still want to submit your work traditionally i can understand because the stress of staying independent is not it it can drive somebody crazy most people don't want to be managers and marketing directors and sales persons they just want to do their art and get on with it so i can understand why most people want to choose the traditional model but there's also a big satisfaction when you stay independent and you do the work by yourself and you actually do it well and you reap the rewards because when you reap the rewards the rewards are like 10 times better than following the traditional model but it will take forever and it's going to take hours of stress to get there and most people might not even get there same with traditional model you think that because you are assigned to a record label you're going to be a successful musician because you are assigned to a traditional publishing house you think you're going to be a successful author it works for some people it doesn't work for some people same with staying independent it works for some people it doesn't work for some people let me know in the comments which one you prefer so for me i actually don't know because both of them they have their drawbacks so that's the reason why i even made this video because i was just confused and i was like which one am i going to pick when it is time so i just wanted to make this video to show that okay you have a choice between going the traditional route and staying by yourself and doing other work i also forgot to add that you can have a hybrid model you sign a contract that maybe you get a little bit of both you can work for some projects on your own and some projects is going to be under mm -hmm. the traditional model mm -hmm. so that's a hybrid model You'll be able to do a little bit mm -hmm. of both so it just depends on your contract and some of these powerhouses will agree some of them will not and it depends on the artist if they feel like they're not really worth it they might not sign it they might not sign that contract with you so just know that you have at least two options to follow when you want to pursue making a career from your interests so if you enjoyed this video please like it I tell YouTube that okay this was very valuable and if you are not subscribed please subscribe for more weekly videos on creative entrepreneurship until next time